Very nice, very, very nice. In today's video, we're gonna be talking all about full face contact, how we can help you improve your ball striking. And we've got an incredible drill, and actually an incredible visual drill as well that you can use on the driving range and at home. Kerod, first of all though, do you wanna to explain to us what actual full face contact is? A lot of the players spend their time lurking around this area, don't they? <laughs> right on the bottom. We all okay. do. <laughs> now, the golf ball is incredibly small, and believe it or not, the reason that is uh, golf clubs are designed the way that they are, with loft and shaft angle, is because the ball we're trying to hit is small. Imagine if the golf ball was bigger, it wouldn't be as crucial to hit down on the ball when the ball's on the ground. You could essentially swing up, Hell. still get underneath the equator of the ball, and it would go up. Think about kicking a football, it's gonna go up in the sky, right? So the reason that we must have a downward strike is because of the size of the equipment that we're using. And for that to occur, if I have an upward strike, we're gonna hit the very bottom of the golf club. But if I want to get the golf club moving downwards on the ball, guess what? We're getting full face contact. There it is. Juicy. So we're gonna be talking about a, an amazing drill to kind of help the, the guys at home recreate full face contact. Do you want to talk us through the, the drill that you've got in mind for everybody? Yeah, so I, I think visuals are great. And obviously we're looking down at the area where the golf ball is laying. And what I want you to do is just bring your focus and awareness to one of the top grooves of the club. And we're going to go just so it goes right to the center. All right, for me, would you say that third groove down there, Carts, is kind of in the center yep. of the golf club as yep. well? So the third groove down on pretty much any iron will generally also be in the center of the face. And I'm gonna use that as the visual and reference. And my objective from this position here is to get the third groove down hitting the golf ball. Now, what's going to naturally happen as I try and get the third groove down hitting the golf ball is I'm going to start creating some shafting and therefore the club is gonna move more in a downward delivery. And before we know it, what's gonna to happen to that compression? It's gonna, it's gonna be amazing. <laughs> That's what it's gonna be. It's gonna be amazing. Ball flight's gonna come off a little bit lower, much more penetrating, stronger. So in terms of how to create that, are you using it just purely as a visual? How can you, how can you mimic an impact position to kind of show the guys? So if you go from what setup looks like mm -hmm. and then show the guys what impact looks like, and th there is a significant difference between where the shaft is. Yeah. Obviously there's a massive difference in where the lower body is in particular. Yeah, so for sure. So if I was to, let's say, go to the extremes of both, and I'm gonna say, I'm not going to hit any groove on the face, what would that look like? Well, if I set up, and the I'm hosel. not gonna try and hit, <laughs> besides the hosel, <laughs> if I'm not gonna try and hit any groove on the face, I'm more than likely going to hang back, my wrists are going to break down, my arms are going to bunch up, and before you know it, we've got a beautiful little top and a transfer of golf club onto the top of the ball. But if I think about getting the third groove down, touching the golf ball at the moment of impact, there I'm exaggerating is. everything. I've got to push that handle as far forward as possible. I've got to shift my weight forward. And look, yes, totally agree. It is ridiculous to think about making contact with the third groove down. But what do we know about exaggeration with our clients that we work with online? A lot of the time, I mean, we have to exaggerate to create feels. Yep. So that's what we're trying to do because at the moment when you're hitting your golf shot, you are doing that because that's what you feel is correct. So we need to move you into a position that A, understanding what the feel would be and to do that, we have to massively exaggerate it. Now, show, just show them what setup would look like again. Mm -hmm. Show them what we would like to see at impact and then show what the exaggeration looks like. There we are. Okay, so we're going to feel that exaggeration to then encourage the correct impact position. Yeah, so just having a few practice swings with no ball whatsoever, and we can actually use a T for this cart. And what you can do is put the T in the ground, so it is essentially mimicking about the equator of the ball like that. And then your objective is to try and get the club hitting the T flush. So for example, if I was coming in this position, you can see there's gonna be a deflection or a glancing blow of where the club's almost moving up the tee. But if I was trying to exaggerate that as much as possible, I've got to almost get it down in this direction, yeah. right? So the little hammer drill, probably move this down just a whisker, whisker more. And my little feel here, if I'm trying to get my third groove hitting that tee, look at that. 
not only is the guard standing, <laughs> but look at the position of the handle and the divot. Yes, huge exaggeration, but as a little chip shot, why don't we just try that as a demo there, mate? And I'll recreate that same feel for a little chip shot. If you've never had compression, this will get it instantly. So rehearsing, third groove down. Love it. Like, what was the amount of power that that shot off with? With no effort. <laughs> There's so many players, well, that don't have never really felt that kind of ground and in that turf interaction. Just by doing this exaggerated drill, like you say, you'd get the first one, like Kerrod there, where he went a couple of inches below the ground. Mm. It's, the, it's the exaggerated feel from when you guys maybe hit up on the golf ball and not touch the ground at all. Yeah. And then you kind of find your little happy medium. But I love this, I love this hammer drill. This is brilliant. Yeah. That was amazing. I should paint it out. I thought about it on the spot, so. <laughs> Let's do that once more. So if you show, if I, if I get the tee set up, so even if you were to do this then without actually trying to create the divot could you do this in slow motion just to kind of push that tee peg into the ground would that be a good visual as well yeah sure and i and i think uh putting a golf ball at the end so it kind of feels like it sits there nicely even though it's very odd to look at and it's almost like you're teeing it up on a yeah. as if it was straight up but on a very um diagonal fashion and then as i was trying to like push that along you're almost like pushing the ball into the yeah. tee so the tee's going to actually be pushed further down yeah. if you've got one of those big old saucepan tees, you know, with a, oh, like yeah, a really, yeah. really yeah. fat so your ball doesn't wiggle off in the wind. That's actually probably a perfect little training aid that you could use if you place the golf ball up against that tee. We can call this the horizontal tee method. <laughs> As we then push that in, look at that. Oh, it is. Really squeezing. Yeah. Guess what we're getting there? Third groove down contact. Full face contact. So now that we've got that in there, why don't we have some fun and see if we can hit the ball and the tee focusing on that little squeezing. Oh, the noise. I know, right? That Two was, for one deal on that one. That was beautiful. Give this drill a try at home. Like say you can go into the back garden, just kind of maybe don't rip up your back garden, but mimic the tee going into the ground. Get an understanding and a visual and a feel for how the club should be delivering itself into the ball and you will have compression for life. Full face contact. Full try face it out. contact. This is Charlie, who just like you, was struggling to find greens in regulation and often saw inconsistent ball flights with his irons. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how two really simple changes help transform his iron play, his ball striking, and therefore increased his greens in regulation data to make him get back to where he belongs. Charlie is a five handicap golfer, but he was only